Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Exodus. I'm Ruel Barksdale, your host, and today is our last day in the book of Exodus. My goodness, it's been a journey. Well, last year we started with the book of Genesis, and Genesis, we said, was the book we found was the book of beginnings, the, the beginning of the earth, the beginning of God's creation, the beginning of salvation, the beginning of sin, the beginning of restoration, the, be, the beginning of God's relationship with man, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning. And so if you want to know the, the true beginning of anything, we found that Genesis was a great place to look. And so this year we look at the book of Exodus. And Exodus is a book of leaving bondage, leaving slavery, leaving a stronghold, leaving something that wouldn't allow God's people to be what they were called to be, leaving something that would, wouldn't allow God's people to worship, leaving something that wouldn't allow God's people to grow in him. How many of you know sometimes in the 21st century we still need to leave? We need to leave. And, and so the prayer in the 21st century isn't let my people go, Pharaoh. The, the prayer of the 21st century is people let Pharaoh go. And so today we're going to look at three things as we close out this book of Exodus. And so the question becomes threefold. There are three people speaking in the book, throughout the book of Exodus. There are three people speaking. One is Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is representative of the world. What the world wants, what the world uh, sees for you, what the world wants to do with you. And sometimes what you want to do with the world. So Pharaoh was speaking, but then the people are speaking. And the people represent our own thoughts, our ideas, our inclinations, our desires, what we think ought to happen. But then thank God there is the voice of God. And one of the things I have found, my brothers and my sisters, is that anything God creates, God speaks to. Anything that God creates, he speaks to. And, and so if today you are wondering, what does God want from me? We have to hear his voice. We have to hear his voice. And, and so to get us started, let's look at the different voices that are in this book of Exodus. We'll start with Exodus, the first chapter. So get your Bibles, get your get paper, get pencil. We're going to walk through this thing as we close out the book of Exodus. And in the first chapter of Exodus, uh, we will start with verse 8. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have come, become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us and leave the company. Let me move down a little bit. So show you how cruel Pharaoh can be. Verse 15. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose name were Zipporah and Pua, when you, hear, when you help the Hebrew children, women in childbirth, and observe them in, on the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. Pharaoh doesn't want you to live, my brothers and sisters. Pharaoh wants to use you. And then when you are no more used to Pharaoh, Pharaoh wants to kill you. The world has no use for you. The world will use you, and then the world will kill you. And so the first voice that we hear in the book of Exodus, one of the first voices we hear is the voice of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is always simplistic in what Pharaoh says. If it's a, if it's a boy, killing. If it's a girl, let her live. Simplistic. And then we hear the voice of the people. Now, the story is that Moses had gone up to talk to, to hear the voice of God. Moses is up on Mount Sinai, but Moses has been there for a while. And the people get nervous. The people, people, well, you know, he's been gone for a minute. Maybe we ought to. Do not allow time 
to make you doubt what God has told you. And so the people, because Moses has been gone so long, they forget about the voice of God. God had already given them the Ten Commandments. God had told them, don't, don't you create this a, a, an image and, and, and worship that image. Don't create a golden image. Don't do this, what they were about to do. And so what do they do? Well, let me read to you chapter 32. I'll start with verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. You see the voice, the voice that of God has somehow disappeared in their ear. He had given them the Ten Commandments. He had told them about the promised land. He told them that he would lead them in the day. He told them he would lead them at the night. But somehow, because things weren't going according to their plan, they heard their own voice. It is a dangerous thing when your voice, when my voice becomes louder, becomes stronger than the voice of God. Pharaoh wants to kill you, your voice will get you off track. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Your voice will lead you to destruction. And then there is the voice of God. The voice of God is, it, it isn't simple. It amazes me. Let's go all the way back to Genesis because I told you that when God creates a thing, he always speaks to it. And when he speaks to it, he gives orders. He gives He gives direction. He, he gives, this is what I want you to do. Even if he's speaking to light in the third chapter of the book of Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, speak. Let there be light, let there, and there was. And so throughout the whole book of Genesis, God is speaking. Let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be, until he gets down to the 26th verse. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them, man and woman, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, immediately after God creates them, look what happens. God blessed them and said to them, speaking, and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that have breath, the breath of life in it, I give you every green plant for food. And it was so. God spoke to them. Even before that, God, when God created the birds, when God created the, 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 the beast of the field, when God created every swimming thing in the ocean, he spoke to them, be fruitful and multiply. God does not create without speaking. What's my point? My brother and my sister, if you are wondering, I, I, I don't know what God wants me to do. That, that If you have not heard the voice of God, it is not because God is not speaking. We have to get into a place where we can hear the voice of God over the voice of Pharaoh, over the voice of people, over the voice of ourselves. We have to hear his voice or we will be led to destruction. The world wants to kill you. My thoughts, your thoughts by themselves will lead us to destruction. In Exodus, the 40th chapter, God is, is, is speaking again to the people. Now, he's told them, starting in around chapter 25, what he wants the tabernacle to be and why he wants the tabernacle. He's been speaking all through the book of Exodus. But in the 40th chapter, where we now rest, the people have finally 
succumbed, subdued, submitted themselves to the voice of God. And so let's see what happens when we submit ourselves, not to Pharaoh's voice, not to our own voice, but to the voice of God. Let's turn to Exodus, the 40th chapter. Now, you remember uh, chapters 25 through 31 and chapters 35 through 40 all deal with the tabernacle. And God's been very specific. See, when Pharaoh speaks, it's simplistic. But when God was telling the, the nation of Israel, Moses specifically, what to do and how to do it, he was very specific. He was very meticulous. When, when building the tabernacle, he said, who can build the tabernacle, where the tabernacle was supposed to be, what were the measurements, what were the materials, what were the colors, what were the vestments of the priest, what were the contents of each part of the tabernacle, what requirements were there of the priest. He was very specific. And my brother, my sister, God does not allow you to be born and created and he just allow you to float around with no direction. God is very specific in your life. Jeremiah 29th chapter, I know the plans, I plans, specificity, I know the plans I have for you. And so if we have not heard the voice of God, then perhaps we need to quiet the voice of Pharaoh. We need to quiet the voice of people. We need to quiet our own voice so we can clearly hear what God is speaking to his creation. You and I are God's creation, and he does not create anything, whether it's plants, whether it's the beast of the field, whether it's the, the birds that fly or the, the swimming fish in the sea. God does not create anything, whether it's mankind. He doesn't create anything without speaking to it. But we have to hear his voice. And in the 40th chapter, his voice is heard because the tabernacle is finally set up. Then the Lord said to Moses, speaking, the Lord said to Moses, set up the tabernacle, the tent of the meeting. On the first day, he told him what to do. He told him when to do it. On the first day of the first month, place the ark of the testimony in it and shield the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps. Place the, very specific. God isn't vague. God doesn't leave you guessing. And if we don't know what he's saying, then we have to quiet the voice of Pharaoh. We have to quiet the voice of the people so we can clearly hear what thus saith the Lord. He will not create without speaking to his creation. And so from verse 1 all the way down through uh, verse I'll say 29, Moses is doing exactly what God told him to do. And then when we get to verse, I will start with verse 33. Then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. He finished what God had told him to do. And my brother and my sister, that is the goal of each and every believer. To hear the voice of God, to know what God has told us to do, and to finish the work. My life's purpose, your life's purpose is to hear the voice of God and to finish the work. We will not finish the work if we're hearing the voice of Pharaoh. We will not finish the work if we're hearing the voice of people. And so if we, and we do, if we want the Lord to say, well done, well done, what? You finished the work. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. Finish the work. And there is work to be done because God does not create without speaking. And when he speaks, he gives you work. The first thing that God gave Adam and Eve was work. Subdue the land. Work. And that was before the fall. Work. God has given you gifts. God has given you abilities. God has given you work. But when we work, 
when we finish the when we finish what God has told us to do, when we become what God has told us to become, this is what happens. Verse 34 of Exodus 40th chapter. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and all the travels of the Israelites Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they were set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and fire was in the cloud by night in the, in the sight of all the house of Israel during their travels. You want the Lord to walk with you? Hear his voice and begin the work. And as the work is finished, the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And isn't that what we want in our lives? Isn't that what we seek for? Isn't that what we long for? For God's glory to be revealed on earth? To finish the work? But we can't finish the work as long as Pharaoh is in our ear. As long as we're following the world. As long as the people's voice is in our ear, as long as we're walking towards destruction. No, my brother, my sister, we have to hear clearly the voice of God so we can finish the work. Walking through the book of Exodus has been a joy. If, in fact, you have missed uh, chapters uh, in Genesis or Exodus, please go to my YouTube channel, Ruel Barksdale 2515, and you can hear a, a lesson on every chapter in the book of Genesis, every chapter in the book of Exodus. Next week, we will start. I am so excited about this. Next week, we, we're going to start on the book of Matthew. Between Malachi and, and Matthew are 400 years where there is no voice of God. There is no prophecy. There is no holy uh, priest worshiping for the people, ministering to the people. There's darkness. And in that darkness, you, you don't hear Pharisees and Sadducees in the Old Testament. Where do they come from? We'll answer those questions and more as we begin our walk through the book of Matthew next Sunday, April the 14th. I hope that this has been a blessing to you as it has been to me. Know that God loves you and that's all that we need. Hear his voice, finish the work. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.